Okay, here we are. It's the last Saturday of September and we're starting to wrap up the garden. Uh, so on tap today, beans, tomatoes and peppers. Uh, beans will be the last go through. I think we're tearing down the the, uh, the actual bean plants themselves. Um, this is Roland Venosvein from uh, East Marsh Acres. And uh, let's take you along for the ride to see what's happening. Um, here are the chickens. So these are layers. We moved them into this paddock last week. It's uh, probably the largest paddock that they've had, or one of them, uh, 30 by 30, approximately. And again, you can see that they've been going to town. Hey ladies, you've been going to town? And uh, having a good time, I think, scratching through. Uh, the mostly grass that's here, even though there's small shrubs that are starting to grow up. I think we'll move them over next there, uh, next to a, to this paddock, um, with a smaller one with a white net uh, that you'll see way over there. We'll bring that uh, net over here and uh, put them into it. Um, and then probably one more large, large-ish kind of paddock uh, over um, by the hoop house. Um, and let's go over to the hoop house. Uh, here are the beans. You can see that they, there are still some on here. We haven't been back to pick in here for a while. So they're large-ish. It's at the end of their production cycle. We're still getting lots and lots of cherry tomatoes off of these volunteer cherries. Uh, underneath there, there are also some um, sweet potatoes. Uh, you can see the vines mostly here and here. And there are lots more purple beans as well down in this area. Um, lots of carrots. But you can start to see that there's quite a bit of damage by our friendly neighborhood rabbits who are eating the tops off of our uh, carrot plants and they're doing a lot of damage as they're going along. Anyways, let's go see what's left. I'm starting to see what's available in the squash. Let's go to the uh, hoop house. So I've taken the door off because we're uh, looking at uh, fixing it up so that it is a little bit more secure when we uh, move the chickens back in here in probably about four weeks or so, something like that. How are the tomatoes? Well, there's a bunch there. Yeah, I saw you. that. One bowl. Paul Robesons. You've been picking basically Paul Robesons? Yeah, and now I'm picking the uh, Romas. Right. So the Paul Robesons I use Dark for earth. sauce. And the Romas I use for cut tomatoes or diced tomatoes. And I put the I put both of them in the freezer. So um, yeah, so these are the latest ones are finally and we have a row of peppers that can be... Yeah, so shall I start with the peppers? Well, I think... Um, or do you want to start with tomatoes? Or do um, you want me you to want start to over beans? beans? Um, and then the girls can look for peppers that are ripe. Okay. Um, yeah, you can I probably use a full them. bucket with the peppers, huh? Because they don't have that much heft to them. What? We can put them in a, a, a large bucket. Well, I was going to put them in that bowl. Yeah, so for the beans, there's a red um, pail. An orange. Hmm? Orange. Red pail. A red pail. Yeah. I don't have an orange pail. 
Okay, where's Phil? Is he off his own? Oh. <clears throat> okay. So, just give you a shot here of Trisha picking tomatoes. So the plants are virtually dying. Yeah. Well, at least um, the Robsons are. These these ones are still. Yeah. They they've got some life on them, but. Uh, but yeah, they're yeah. they're starting to starting to die. That's good. I thought I didn't think that I was going to have a lot of uh, dice tomatoes, but it looks like uh, I will. Another one behind you. You that? That's not even yeah, I know. I didn't see it until it was in my hand. <coughs> There's two more be better ones. There are piles of tomatoes in here though, Trish. Yeah, thank goodness they're ripening in the greenhouse. Mm hmm Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you heard uh, one of the YouTubers that we were we follow was actually talking about the differences between um, tomatoes that uh, ripen in higher temperatures they end up essentially with more um, sugars because of the higher temperatures um, and it's one of the reasons why oh yeah stress that was the other thing oh. that they were talking about that they ripen on stress yeah so stress uh, stressed plants typically have a, uh, a, a better um, kind of flavor to them uh, because they need to actually put a lot of their resources into the actual uh, uh, um, fruits themselves. To ripen? Well, not only to ripen, but to make sure that the fruits are going to uh, have uh, the best possible conditions for the seeds. Um, whereas if, and that's particularly with uh, watering. Uh, so if if your tomatoes um, aren't quite sure as to where the next water uh, uh, is going to come from, etc., then they start putting a lot of that water content into their into the fruit itself. Whereas um, in a greenhouse, uh, when they're watering on a regular basis, you know, commercial greenhouses, etc., um, they don't taste very good as a yeah, consequence because right. they're not stressed right so yeah I, I i do know which end of the camera that i, <laughs> I <did>. okay <laughs> i didn't know uh yeah what you were what you're filming we, we've whatever. had an error uh in the last little while um yeah so i i was just thinking about our next paddock trish i think i'd like to put another paddock out here with the white and then maybe either put the next big paddock there like around here or or uh in in this area i'd like to see them in here see what they do yeah what do you think this is probably our wildest area yeah i don't know i don't know what though the amount of work that have to do to all those pricker things i don't know if they'll yeah do well well, the front side, they'll they'll be fine. So out there. Yeah. Yeah, like there. Yeah. That's where they've been before. Yeah. 
Well, not right here, but over but to the left. Go, maybe you can go, like, so you're doing a little one next. Yeah. And then maybe you can go further out and then come in as far as you, like, to this bunch of crop here. Yeah, with the 30-30? Yeah. 30 by 30? Okay. Let's see what I can do in terms of beans. Again, we were also seeing that the more sun, the uh, the plants that have these dark colored pigments in them, like these purple beans do, the darker the color becomes. So it's the, the darkness of the color becomes the representation of how much sun they've been exposed to. Right, I think I'm going to put the uh, camera down and pick for a bit. Ladies, come to see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So here's our bounty for today. Um, basket or bowl full of peppers. Got some squashes that were off the vine here. I've got Roma tomatoes, Paul Robeson tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, red peppers, carrots, and the rest is beans in there. The last picking. Most of them will be um, seed seeds for next year. And, we can uh, cut a few up for, as French so, cuts. So and yeah, the bigger ones will. Some other ones will do some French cuts. Anyways, that's our our uh, bounty for today. Still got lots of zinnias. We're gonna cut some later today with the grandkids. I'm amazed at how big some of those marigolds are. <laughs> I know the marigolds that we planted by the beans to protect them. So, uh, well, they did their job, I guess. Anyways, see you later from East Marsh Acres. Bye for now. Bye.